What's up, guys? Zach Hample coming to you from whatever this place is Home called. Home Depot Park. Something like that. It's always going to be Marlins Park as far as I'm concerned. My 23rd different Major League Baseball stadium this season. So just seven more to hit up all 30. And just follow me around this way. We'll show the lovely people on YouTube what it looks like, including the roof. Yes, check it out. So the Padres are here, minus Tatis but they got Juan Soto. They're a great team, looking forward to seeing them. And I'm looking forward to updating this hat. It's been three years since I was here. I forget when the Marlins changed their logo, but yeah, I gotta get with the time. So that's one of the goals along with catching baseball. So batting practice, gonna be starting up soon. So let's head inside. And here we go inside the stadium. It was very noisy with music. So that's why I am talking to you here. I don't wanna get demonetized. How fun. Anyway, here is Blake Snell on the warning track. Padres pitcher. You're going to see him chuck this ball up. Not to me. And so I decided to follow him over here. There was another ball, but he didn't give me that one. I was annoyed. But look at this. We all saw he had another one, so I went over, and I'm going to freeze it right here because that ball was not on the screen very long, but I caught that one. Not sure why he threw it to me, and I handed that to this kid in the navy blue shirt. After that, I hauled ass over to right field and headed down into the seats. Left field kind of sucks as far as the layout. Right field is also pretty tough. You'll see more of that in a moment. Here's a thrown ball to a fan in the corner. His name is Brian, fellow ball hawk. He's kind of new to all this, so this was the first time that he and I had met. And check this out. Jorge Alfaro is up at bat. Crazy opposite field power. Look where this one went. Right into my glove in the front row. So that one really felt good. And here is Alfaro showing off more of his opposite field power. Pretty impressive. This player, by the way, nothing special. He chucked this ball up to a fan who snagged several over the course of the day. And this security guard was telling us to get off the staircase next to the bullpen. What is the deal, man? Let people live their lives. Too many rules. Here is a slow-mo toss-up into my glove from the bullpen. Not sure who threw it, but if I had to guess, I would say it was Tim Hill. And I wanted to give that ball to a kid who was over the bullpen, so I'm telling him to move back. Security didn't even notice that I threw that to him. And this was another weird situation with security. I thought they were yelling at me, and I'm like, what did I do? I'm just standing here. And this guard is like, that ball down below you on the platform, the guy on the field is going to get it for you. Just relax. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure. So here's Josh Bell cranking a few balls out to right field. None of these reached the seats, but still it was just impressive to see him doing his thing. And here we are looking at you, Darvish, when all of a sudden I got the ball from the guard on the field. I don't know how he got it if someone climbed up there, but I handed that one off and I couldn't find my bag. And then this kid, you'll see he hands it to me and I'm just like, what the hell, man? I don't know what it is about this stadium, but despite the fact that attendance is always so low, I still find myself stressed out whenever I'm here. And this was you, Darvish. I was hoping to get this toss up, never gotten one from him, but that same guy got that baseball. And all these balls sitting on the platform, yeah, there's a guard lurking underneath who's like, yeah, don't try to run out there because you are so getting busted. So I was down in the front looking around and look at all this dead, wasted space between the outfield wall and the seats. That is some bad stadium design. Here's a look at the left field club. Word was spreading that Jake Paul was there and I think this was Jerickson pro far up at bat. Whoever it was, he was going oppo, hit a bunch of line drives, a bunch of grounders. And then this next dude, look at this, wasn't doing anything. And I know that guys, often go oppo their first time through in BP, but it seemed like a waste of time to be out in right field. So you can see right here that I hustled once again to get back over to left. I had to wait online to get a wristband to go down the stairs into this club, and you can see what it looks like. This is actually very cool stadium design, so thumbs up to the Marlins for this. Totally unique, interesting opportunities to catch balls. I was lurking up on the stairs here for a bit, because I could actually see over the outfield wall from that spot. When you are down in the club, this is what it looks like to the left, and I'm gonna give you a slow pan over to the right. It's a very weird space. They used to have a swimming pool there, they took it out, and that dude right there, well, that is, in fact, Jake Paul. Here's an even better look at him, surrounded by, I guess, his videographer and his entourage. You're gonna see more of him in a bit. Got to chat with him. So I was ignoring him for the moment because there was work to be done. I was trying to catch baseballs in this weird setup behind the left field wall. Mike Clevenger was out there doing his thing and things were so dead that I decided, well, 
I guess I'm gonna wander over closer to Mr. Paul because security wasn't trying to stop me and I just really was not feeling the whole ball hawking thing. Brandon Drury right there was taking some hacks and there is Clevenger, you're gonna see him toss this one over. He was really being nice. And what do you think about this dancing? That's pretty nice. But yeah, Clevenger, you can see he's fielding a ball, already has one in his hand, so he chucks one into the crowd and then fires that one back to the bucket, which is fair. He's not gonna throw every ball up into the crowd, but he was being very generous. You can see him catching this one and look who ends up getting this one. It's our old friend with the brown shirt. So that was at least three for him. And this one, okay, here's some super slow-mo. I was competing with my friend Dennis. He had a better position. Our gloves hit, the ball blooped out. He made one hell of a recovery to catch that one. So, you know, congrats to him. It definitely is a competition, but we try to keep things friendly. And that was it for batting practice, so the grounds crew was doing their thing. And here is the Jake Paul portion where things got interesting. Oh, wait, you're the guy on TikTok. So this dude right here was trying to give me a baseball thinking that it would count in my collection, but it doesn't. People always offer me balls and I don't take them from fans, so thanks. And anyway, here I am starting up a conversation with Jake, which I captioned for you. Again, the audio was just ridiculous here. That's often how it is inside dome stadiums. It just traps all the noise. And again, I don't want to have this video demonetized and it's hard to hear what was being said. So I did the work for you. You can go back and watch it again and read everything. But right here, I had basically asked him if he'd ever caught a ball and he said he did. Now, it wasn't clear if this was a batting practice home run or an actual gamer. If I had to guess, I would say it was a BP homer, but either way, very cool. Nice to know that he is a fellow ball hawk. And you know, for those who don't know, Jake Paul is a YouTuber with over 20 million subscribers. He's been an actor, he's a social media influencer, a boxer, and he's recording hip hop now, so he's done a whole lot of stuff. And he's been involved in some controversies, but I'm not here to talk about all that. All I can tell you is that it was interesting to meet a fellow creator, someone who is much bigger than I am, so I have to give him a lot of respect for that. And, you know, after we were chatting, a whole bunch of people came up to me, they wanted selfies, and they wanted some autographs too, so it was really fun. It was like Jake and I were doing a double autograph signing. Huge thanks to Jake Paul for being a man of the people, but in all seriousness, he was being very cool. He took photos with everybody, signed a whole bunch of autographs, and as you saw, I got to chat with him for a bit. And no, I did not challenge him to a fight. And after all of that chaos wrapped up, I headed up to the main concourse in left field, and I gotta give a shout out to a very friendly fan named Ian, who brought a beer to Fenway Chris, and then gave a bottle of water to me, not Dasani. And so, for right now, still hanging up here on the concourse, I gotta get a new hat, and also, this shirt, by the way, I am going to link to a blog entry that I wrote 12 years ago when I got this shirt. I was at this series, Mets and Marlins, and I bought this shirt off the back of one of the employees there because a decade ago, MLB was not just going all out with all the merch, so you couldn't even buy these things from like the shop. So anyway, I know I can buy a Marlins hat, so that's the next step, and then game time is only like 25 minutes away, so let's do it. It's a business expense because I'm wearing it in a video, but yeah, I guess the Marlins need the money, right? And also, guys, you cannot be leaving stickers on your hats. That's Amen, brother. Amen. Right there. If you leave stickers on your hat, you're lame.
showing by the Padres offense in the first inning. Juan Soto and Manny Machado both struck out on questionable calls, so I'd have to say that Jake Paul has had the best performance of the evening so far with his successful ceremonial first pitch, albeit from halfway between the mound and home plate. And you know, as we begin the second inning right now with no score, I was thinking that I would hang out here in right center for all or most of the game, but I'm just not feeling it and I'm kind of antsy and I want to wander, so I think I'm going to go back to the club in left field. There is some room to roam there and possibly catch a home run, so let's do it. So these fans came up with the warm-up ball and these ladies were coming up with all kinds of food. That was fun to see. And you can see right through these windows into the Marlins bullpen. So I headed down these stairs and look who was on the other side. That is my buddy Richard Blyer tossing a baseball to me. Now this was the 30th ball he has ever thrown me and it was my 300th ball of the season. Now here we see Juan Soto out in right field heading back to his position as Jerickson Profar wipes the sweat off his brow. And oh yeah, by the way, there was a baseball game taking place, which is easy to forget here, especially when you're in the club and there are all kinds of distractions. Speaking of which, as we see Jake back out on the field, look at this dude riding his bat and then going for the world record bat flip. That was kind of funny. Now this is Richard Blyer playing catch with the left fielder and I wonder what's going to happen with that baseball. Is there really any doubt? Come on. Of course he threw that ball to me because Richard Blyer is the man. So he had just thrown me two. I think he's going for Carlos Beltran's record for throwing me the most balls. That number is 38 by the way. So I gave Richard a wave through the glass window right here, took a photo with a fan and look who hit a home run next. No, not Tatis, but Nick Fortes, his second of the game, and that one landed in the club and I was out of position, so that was my cue to leave. And after that, I went and got some food up in the concourse. Somehow, I tried to order one arepa, but they gave me two arepas. So between the food and my hat, I've now spent 70 bucks here. So, um, I guess I'm eating two meals right now. Unless Fenway Chris, do you want a bite? No. All right, more for me. Let's go. Good though. see it so flew right over their heads into my glove something's happening on the field I'm gonna keep talking to you top seven right now Marlins are up three nothing and since there are no kids up here I guess I'm gonna give this baseball my seventh of the day to the ladies saving play. The Padres started the eighth inning with a double and then ran themselves right out of a great opportunity. And then my guy, Richard Blyer, got the call after that. His average fastball this season is only 89 miles per hour, but he got the job done, inducing an inning-ending ground out from Jerickson Profar. And in the ninth, well, I headed back down to the club, which was just as noisy as ever. And in fact, I think it got even more crowded as this game went on. 
The Padres made things interesting by getting a couple of guys on base, but the Marlins shut them down to squeak out the win. Nick Fortes, as I mentioned earlier, hit a couple of bombs, and starting pitcher Edward Cabrera also deserves some love. He had a scoreless outing tonight to lower his season ERA to 1.78. Final score, Marlins 4, Padres 3, and there was still a whole lot of action for me after that. While all the players were clearing the field, Marlins coach Wellington Cepeda emerged from the bullpen and handed me the lineup card. So of course, I was super hyped after that, and so were a bunch of fans near me who are still down in the club. Great vibes all around tonight in Miami. And the party kept going from there. A friendly clubhouse attendant named Yadder, who had chatted with me earlier, walked out with several baseballs and tossed them to me from the field. Not one, not two, but three. Now, I always prefer to hand baseballs off to kids, but there were none around me, so I gave them to the grown-ups there instead. And that brings us outside of the stadium, where I'm gonna wrap things up for you guys. First of all, Chris behind the camera, if you could do the honors and get a nice shot of this lineup card. I can't make fun of the stadium name anymore because it says it up there, so Lone Depot Park. All right. Um, Check the description. I think I already mentioned some stuff that I'm gonna throw there in old blog entry. I will link to a page on my website, zachhampel.com, where I have all the lineup cards that I've gotten over the years, dozens of them. Really, check it out, it's pretty cool. And by the way, the 10 baseballs that I got today, yes, double digits, including all the giveaways, that brings the lifetime total to 11,964. So just 36 more balls to 12,000. The numbers have been piling up a lot lately. So I still don't know where it's gonna happen, but you guys better subscribe to find out. And of course, only seven more stadiums for me to hit up all 30 this year. So it's pretty empty out here. We gotta go. We will be back here tomorrow for one more game. So stay tuned for that. And as always guys, thanks for watching.